Dear participants of uh, the session 1B uh, at the electronics conference uh, held in Lithuania, I hope uh, you hear me well. And uh, we are about to start our session in three minutes. So first, I would like to uh, say something about some technical issues and introduce myself. Well, uh, we use uh, Zoom software and uh, hopefully you are quite familiar with, with it and uh, I hope there will be no problems with sharing um, the screen and the presentations and maybe uh, use your cameras and uh, you are free to ask uh, any questions during the presentations using uh, the chat window. And uh, of course, we would have uh, just a few minutes after each presentation for uh, some short questions and answers. Uh, considering uh, the 90 minutes, 90 minutes uh, for the session, uh, we would have um, 15 minutes for each presentation and three minutes for um, the question and answers uh, session. I would ask you to stop sharing the screen after uh, ending your presentations to make it possible to, to share another screen from, from another user. Uh, so we uh, are expected to have uh, five presentations uh, presented by four presenters because the first and the last presentation will be, will be uh, presented by the same person. Um, a few words, just a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Krzysztof Karma. I work as an associate professor at the Department of uh, Signal Processing and Multimedia Engineering at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering in Szczecin, northwestern Poland. Uh, uh, my university is called West Pomeranian University of Technology in Szczecin. Pomerania is the northern region of Poland. Um, I usually attend the, the, the electronics conference uh, this year. It was not possible, but I was asked uh, to chair this ses session. So it is my great honor and pleasure to be the chairman of this session again. It's not the first time, but the first time uh, online. So. Uh, I hope everything is clear, so we can start our first first presentation. Um, the presenter will be Mr. Sigdem Bakir from Turkey, and uh, the title of the paper is "Creating the Data Generator and Implementing Algor Algorithms in Process Analysis." So, uh, Mr. Bakir, the, I would say the virtual floor is yours. So please share your screen and present your paper. Everyone, hi. Uh, I work at uh, Dudupnar University uh, Software Engineer as Assistant Professor Doctor. Uh, this paper creates uh, the data generator and implement an algorithm in process analysis. Uh, this study uh, process mining uh, is a new field of work aimed to uh, meet the business world's need to end uh, happiness and productive. This field work uh, on analyze, discovering, managing, uh, and improving uh, business process. Uh, this study aimed to study uh, our study is co presented of two significant studies. Uh, first, data generated for process, and second, algorithm applied for discovering the created process. Uh, our study is aimed to create a, a data generator um, that conducts process mo modeling, simulation, and analysis. Uh, there are three uh, main models in the system developed in this study. The initial step of these models is to define the process in the system. In the second model, the simulation model looks twice completing uh, with the probably designed process model are created. 
Finally, in the analyze model, uh, meaning group information, the process suggests uh, individual and team performance is extraction uh, from the generated events logs. And uh, at the second state, uh, process were discovered using alpha heuristic gener uh, generic algorithm, uh, which are process mining discovery uh, process were demonstrated with uh, patternets and the algorithm performance were uh, compared using the fitness function, accuracy rate, and running time. Uh, generate uh, set, uh, set rich, uh, of process mining, uh, process mining, uh, our scoping uh, contribution of this study, it uh, includes the production of synthetic data and uh, our data generated simulation data different station, uh, with uh, different station and uh, uh, secret for process model, the visual examination of the flows of the process uh, and the implementation uses process mining algorithm. The development of a new software platform that can be used in the uh, field of process mining. Uh, in figure uh, process mining general uh, structure, how each process in the real world is kept in uh, event logs as sequential of events by means of software system. Thereafter, information in such, a, such event logs is analyzed by discovery, fitness check, and by uh, modeling uh, with improvements, which are stage of process mining. And uh, the steps our model uh, the steps our model uh, first uh, uh, two second first data generated simulation uh, and uh, process mining algorithm. Uh, the main stage uh, data generator and process mining discovery algorithm. Data generator simulation first model create a process model. Uh, second model simulation of team based data, third model analysis, and synthetic data, real data, and uh, data generator simulation data. Uh, second station uh, process discovery algorithm, alpha heuristic genetic uh, expression uh, study, performance metric, accuracy, fitness time, uh, fitness time. And uh, so uh, credit, uh, example credit card application process, uh, receive application, uh, credit card uh, loan amount, perform checks for large amount and rejection or approval. Uh, and uh, notify exception finish uh, and uh, Data generator, our data generated simulation data uh, patronate created with alpha algorithm of sample credit data set and uh, same data uh, heuristic algorithm credit data set and uh, genetic algorithm sample uh, created data set. And so Process uh, mining algorithm uh, discovery phase of process mining uh, and uh, most important state of process mining is the discovery of process from event logs and model creation. Variation process mining algorithm uh, expression alpha and heuristic algorithm can be used during process discovery. And uh, second, second uh, process mining conformation uh, checking, uh, same uh, fitness checking, uh, description, uh, and developing state of process. The aim of this state is to determine and change the deficiencies of the existing model and to uh, enable it is redeveloping. For example, activities that are costly in terms of time are 
determined by uh, reviewing the event logs and, and obstruction between these activities uh, are uh, identified uh, and remodelated. Uh, developed parts uh, of process mining uh, and uh, fitness checking state of process. Uh, at this stage, process are uh, monitor, monitor and the fitness of the exit process and the process obtained uh, from the event logs is checked. That it is used to, to detect difference between the event log and the model to determine their position in the process and to measure their severity. Uh, and uh, second, uh, our study, uh, second state process mining algorithm, uh, alpha uh, genetic uh, heuristic algorithm, uh, equation, uh, equation, and uh, simulation data, our data generating uh, simulation data, daily activity work, application, master application, credit application, patent, chart data, and missing data. Uh, the same uh, five uh, data, uh, missing data, uh, six patient chart data, uh, and uh, average uh, fitness, value, fitness value. And uh, the fitness uh, tool data is show uh, uh, simulation data, uh, 0 point, 0 point, uh, 078 uh, 0 0.62 uh, difference uh, and uh, heuristic algorithm uh, uh, and whereas the fitness function heuristic algorithm uh, 0 0.83 uh, difference uh, 0 0.68 uh, difference uh, 0 0.15 uh, genetic algorithm uh, 0 0.87, uh, difference 0 0.83, uh, 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 0.4. Uh, and in the missing data, uh, the change in the fitness function of genetic algorithm, genetic algorithm less than uh, the alpha and heuristic algorithm. Uh, and uh, simulation data, synthetic data, uh, figure in uh, figure, uh, synthetic data, the synthetic data exercise one, exercise two, three, uh, four, five, uh, missing synthetic uh, data six, exercise one, uh, zero point uh, alpha uh, algorithm. Uh, Synthetic data phi uh, uh, difference uh, missing synthetic data uh, uh, six uh, uh, zero point uh, one uh, phi uh, and heuristic algorithm uh, zero point uh, zero point uh, four uh, genetic algorithm zero point uh, Seven uh, and genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithm. Uh, moreover, uh, average average fitness. Uh, the accuracy values of the algorithm. Genetic algorithm uh, yields successful uh, results compared to heuristic and alpha algorithm. Uh, other other real data set uh, the same uh, accuracy rate. Uh, and uh, uh, some events uh, run during deleted, deleted from uh, missing uh, real uh, data three, uh, miss, uh, missing real data uh, three, petition information, uh, event logs, some events uh, were randomly uh, random added to and deleted from the missing and uh, noisy read data, traffic, uh, traffic uh, data, and uh, algorithm, per the performance of the alpha algorithm is lower than heuristic and uh, genetic algorithm. Uh, on the other hand, the genetic algorithm yields better results uh, than the heuristic algorithm, and the same uh, data set. 
uh, process uh, results of process mining algorithm for same uh, data set. We obtained uh, the data similar to this data set with our own data generated simulation. However, since we called, couldn't obtain a synthetic version of this data, we only compared it to performance to data uh, set with alpha heuristic and genetic algorithm. Similar results uh, were obtained uh, other tables. Uh, con conclusion and feature uh, and in in today's information system information about events uh, on business process is recording and event logs meaning uh, event logs meaningful information about time cost and process can be extracted over to this information it is possible uh, to improve the process or uh, measure the performance of the process. At first, state this uh, web-based data generated was developed in this data generating comprised of three main models. Process models can be created, albeit the data suite for process can be uh, generated and analyzed and uh, discovered. And uh, second state, a system was create uh, process mining algorithm uh, implemented uh, and such as alpha heuristic and genetic algorithm were applied and the results were compared in the with, uh, with the created of uh, fitness, accuracy and uh, time. <coughs> Completed the <coughs> result of alpha and heuristic algorithm. Uh, the heuristic algorithm yields more successful results than the alpha algorithm. Uh, and genetic algorithm uh, better results than the heuristic algorithm in complement uh, process <coughs> due to application of the genetic proced uh, procedure, selection, crossover, and uh, uh, mutation. Uh, in the future, is aimed to improve the system by integrating difference algorithm <coughs> into this study. In addition, it is uh, recommended to develop uh, st studies to deal uh, with process mining problems such as noisy data and complement uh, process uh, and this uh, dis uh, disadvantage of uh, our study. And uh, thank you. Uh, question. Uh, okay, thank you very much for your presentation and for, for a great time, exactly 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, okay. so it's a great success. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So, um, are there any questions from uh, the participants? Uh, you, you may raise your hands or just ask the questions directly if you wish. Uh, I have a question. Okay, please. Uh, how is the fitness function obtained in the study? Uh, Thank uh... you. Okay, uh, I didn't add uh, present and uh, my paper uh, F uh, S is the total process, U is the non uh, separation process, and K is the remaining process that can be separation. And alpha heuristic uh, and genetic algorithm different uh, fitness function. Uh, and so uh, a equation to expression process uh, fitness function and uh, fitness function uh, as the total process uh, uh, difference uh, non uh, separation process t repeated process and k remaining process and uh, genetic algorithm uh, the same. Uh, fitness function. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? 
maybe I would ask one, uh, just a simple question. What are the future algorithms, uh, algorithms you may work on in your future research? Uh, do, do, do you think about maybe incorporation of some maybe deep learning methods for big data, the data sets? Uh, okay, in, in future work, uh, deep learning data, uh, big data and uh, amplification uh, paper uh, and uh, fuzzy logic and deep learning uh, recognition uh, deep learning method and uh, big data uh, and difference uh, area uh, we impl implement we uh, develop uh, we are developing okay thank you uh, probably we'll, we will have no time for the other questions so thanks uh, once again and uh, we can go to the second presentation uh, this time, um, uh, as far as I know, the presenter will be the PhD student Mehmet Korkmaz, also from Turkey, and the uh, title of the presentation will be a hybrid phishing detection system by using deep learning based URL and content analysis. So, uh, Mr. Korkmaz, now it's Mr. for sure. <laughs> because of the first name, sorry, uh, and uh, virtual floor is yours. The supervisor probably is uh, Osgood Koray Sahingos. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mehmet Korkmaz. Uh, I'm a student at Yildiz Technical University uh, in Computer Engineering Department. Uh, our paper is about a hybrid phishing detection system by using the learning based URL and content analysis. The outlines of our study is uh, starting with introduction and then summary, data set, URL based model, content based model, fish fish model, our proposed system, experimental result, comparison of uh, relation related works, and uh, ends with conclusion. A cyber attack can be defined as a deliberate attempt to harm computers steal data or make a compromised computer system with some new attacks on other computers. As one of the popular attack like phishing attacks imitates a reputable firm or individual to obtain private information of the victims, such as login credentials or financial data. Uh, the, uh, Phishing become even more harmful because it's focused on the weakest part of the security chain, computer users. Whereupon academic studies and uh, different applications are carried out. These uh, studies make classification based on list based, uh, rule based, issue similarity based, machine learning, and deep learning based by analyzing the mails, websites, or URLs. Currently, machine learning. And the deep learning systems are especially preferred for its protection mechanism to do zero day attacks. Today, with studies in the fields of deep learning, the contribution to the field has increased considerably. At this point, the number of data is very important for us. Analyzing the web page. This analysis can be carried out on three bases. First one is URL based analysis. Main advantage is that it is very fast. However, the detection becomes harder to catch on very similar URLs. In the second, content is analyzed. Uh, although the advantage of content is that it examines the entire website in detail, this causes the system to work slowly. In addition, when the website is offline, it cannot be detected. In hybrid approach, the advantage of these two uh, methods are tried to be combined. In this context, it is aimed to that the system which detects the phishing site with best accuracy will work in the optimal time. URL-based analysis. What is your URL? A URL is a complex, complex string that is synthetically and semantically expressed for a resource accessible over the internet. Due to the dynamic structure of the website's URL, 
protection of the animal in the URL has high popularity on the security of the users. The differences over standard URLs are important in determining anomalies. Here are URL phishing samples. For example, bank names are often imitated. In the first example, we can see a URL similar to this description. Various descriptions are made by using URLs of well-known brands within the phishing URL, and some are so long. The second URL is an example of this. As in the third and the fourth example, well-known domains are used in the fake URLs. Human users can see these URLs when they look carefully, but sometimes they can be bypassed. Content-based analysis. Website content basically consists of HTML, CSS, JavaScript codes, images, videos, and texts. Unfold content is also deceiving by users by using them. It comes in two categories. The first category, a particular crafted web content. This is the delicious one. And the second one, human fallibility of web content. And this means the phishing one. Attacks about phishing content are highly prevalent in today's web. So we are searching the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can see a sample phishing website from our data set on the screen. This is about a bank website. The HTML codes of, the, of this website can be seen on the screen. There may not, not be much difference in these codes when looking at legitimate websites' first code lines. But looking at the remaining lines of the code, any links and scripts can be seen about phishing. Hybrid analysis. Combination of URL and content analysis is the hybrid analysis. This combination can be either by combining the features of the from two analysis and giving them as inputs to the models, or by merging the models, or by combining the results obtained from the models of the separate analysis. In this result, it is aimed to detect phishing attacks by using URLs and websites' contents. For this purpose, it was created a new dataset, which is called high-risk URL and content dataset. By empirically examining just URLs or contents, we created a new mechanism, which is called URL and content based detection method, UCDM, to combine two of them together. A new method, which is called two-state hybrid phishing detection system, PHISH, URL and content based method is proposed. Therefore, it is important to prevent these attacks before they reach users. Based on this idea, we aim to implement a hybrid phishing detection system by using a learning approach with URL and content analysis. This system protects users before the third action is seen in figure of phishing lifecycle. The dataset was generated thanks to the info that is shared by fishtank.com. URLs that have been detected and found to be harmful by their life are labeled as phishing. The data that was added to the checklist after being suspicious by the users and then labeled as legitimate constituted in risky legitimate part. In this respect, the part where the data set differs from those in the literature is the legitimate part and the redundancy of total data. URL based model. The URL-based model, part of the hybrid analysis model, is, as you can see in the figure, the GAN model. The feature extraction process is examined, and 73 features are identified from the URL text as detailed. And then we use some machine learning with learning models. This is our GAN model. Here are the features we use. Details can be found in our article and reference publications. Character analysis. This is the second step. URL-based model with character features. As seen in figure, character-based embedding is used in the URL-based approach. All letters are converted to the lowercase in the preprocessing step. Figure shows our CNN model, which we used. A model called GCNN, the third step, is merging the two steps. Uh, we merge the GAN and CNN models by using handcrafted and character embedding features. And uh, it is propo proposed for URL-based approach. 
dense layers were used after concatenation of models. Here, in addition to the general work, we have implemented a hybrid approach in the URL analysis part, emerging the two system. Content-based model. This is the second stage. Figure shows our DNA model, which we use. Major components of website contents are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 57 content-based features are per use. Details can be found in our article and reference publications. Our proposed model, fish fish model. Finally, in the model we proposed, we mix URL and content, as you can see in the slide. The system consists of two control states. The first is URL-based analysis. The second is content-based analysis. The URL to be checked is first put into the URL-based analysis, and the prediction result is obtained. If this result is phishing, is considered as the system result phishing without switching to content based analysis. This saves time in analysis. If the result is legitimate, it moves to the second stage, the content based analysis step. If the URL content is not available, the result is considered a URL based result without review. If there is content, content based analysis is also performed. If results are obtained from both stages, UCDM works. UCDM works as follows. The prediction result in the both stage are taken from the models as a percentage. The final legitimate percentage value is obtained by proportioning the percentage of being legitimate from the first and the second stage according to the threshold value determined according to the ensemble approach. The same process is calculated for the fishing percentage. Thus, the naive classification value are obtained with the ensemble approach. If the URL is legitimate in the first stage, the result of the ensemble approach in the second stage are valid. In UCDM, if phishing rate is bigger than legitimate rate, it goes to the phishing. Otherwise, it goes to the legitimate classification. Structures, structures of models. Shown in the figures are the basic structure of the models we used, the GAN, TNN, and the DNN models. In this research, experiments were carried out in deep learning models using character embedding and handcrafted features. Accordingly, various results have been obtained. Five-fold cross-validation is used for the train and test sets. One character embedding is used in tokenizer and experiments were carried out using them. The echo value was taken as 100 in all the models. Some different models created and tested. All the results were compared separately in URL content and hybrid approach. These are the results of URL-based models. One model gave the best accuracy with the handcrafted features. CNN model gave the best accuracy with one character features. And the one and CNN, DCNN model gave the best accuracy with merge models. This is our URL-based model result. The content-based model result is uh, the CNN model. Uh, it gives the best result uh, in content-based model. Based on table, each fish model is proposed, which can provide maximum performance with the UCDM approach, which was created. As can be seen in table, the new model obtained by combining DNN in the content-based approach and DCNN in the URL-based approach achieved 98.37% accuracy can be seen in the result that the accuracy is increased from the URL-based model by approximately 0.7% and from the content-based model by approximately 5% as depicted in table. In the Tishfish model, FPR has been uh, reduced by about 30%. Additionally, uh, there is considerable decrease in error rate of the proposed model about 50%. Comparison of related works. One of the remarkable points here is that, in addition to use deep learning models in both approaches, uh, results were obtained in larger data set compared to the others. Another important point is that the success in the high risk category, whose URL links are reported as suspicious to the fish tank, and therefore uh, this reduced a more realistic result with 98.37% accuracy. In this paper, 
Firstly, a study about collection of a relatively large URL and content data set was conducted by collecting fishing and legitimate data from fish tank. And secondly, fivefold cross validation in URL based model, 97.68% uh, accuracy in the GCNM model uh, is given. Performance of the system uh, in the content based model. 93.39% accuracy with the DNN model. Finally, our main proposal, Tishfish, which uses the hybrid model of the URL and content based models, was conducted. And in this model, 98.37% accuracy was achieved. So it can be said that the use of hybrid model U results in better efficiency in the detection of phishing data. In future studies, we aim to increase the amount of data in the high risk URL and content data set. Additionally, we aim to optimize the feature selection mechanism by using evolutionary algorithms in order to increase the overall system's efficiency. Here are our references, and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I would start the discussion. Are there any questions from? The participants. Nobody. So maybe I would ask uh, maybe more than one question because I'm quite interested uh, in this. I can see. Oh, I can see. Thank you in Polish as well. All right, nice. Well, the first thing uh, is the close database verification because uh, you managed some experiments using your data set you described this data set and uh, you have uh, presented the table with some other results obtained using some other methods for the other data sets so i wonder what your method trained using your data set would work on the uh, on the other database bases this is the first question. The second is related to um, the possibility of uh, choosing some features automatically by the network, by the deep learning, uh, because it is not a common um, solution that the deep learning models are used on the handcrafted features usually especially in image analysis uh, such features are uh, generated by the network and additionally i would ask just for curiosity purposes because you uh, analyze the attributes and text from the website uh, maybe it would be possible to analyze uh, additionally, as the third uh, element, uh, how mm, the websites look like. Maybe render the website, make a kind of virtual screenshot and analyze how does the web, uh, web look like. Are the images correct and the, and the organization of elements on the websites, are there uh, are they correct or not? Do, do, do you think about such possibility in your future work? So maybe three questions are, are enough, not more. Yeah. Uh, the first one, uh, our data set is a high risk data set. We collect them in fish tank, a good legitimate part and the fishing part. Uh, in the literature, each used uh, data sets uh, are coming from the fish tank uh, and Alexa or uh, Nemo's tools. Uh, these uh, legitimate parts are uh, very, uh, very similar, uh, and uh, we can identify them with uh, looking at the URL. Uh, our uh, main uh, structure. Uh, is which which is the which is the best uh, prediction? Uh, the, the main thing uh, we work on is the data set 
in here. Uh, in the second part, uh, we can use visual similarity based uh, method uh, by screenshots, but uh, the phishing websites use the same uh, figures, the same things, uh, it's uh, original websites. Uh, but in the in the uh, codes, uh, HTML, CSS, uh, or JavaScript codes, we collect them uh, automatically. Uh, so uh, it can be used, uh, but uh, this can be very practical. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I agree with the second part for sure. Uh, about the cross database uh, verification and uh, and the first part, uh, I I wonder if there is no overfitting here. So that's that was the uh, the idea of my question. So just uh, thinking about the universality of your approach. Okay, so thank you once again. Uh, probably there are no questions from the other participants. Probably not. Okay, so thank you once again. And now we thank switch you. to Lithuania. Uh, the next paper will be presented by Mrs. Dovila Komolovaite. And uh, the title of the paper is Vehicle Make Detection Using the Transfer Learning Approach. So another application of deep learning, uh, a bit different, but probably a bit more visual. So the virtual oh. floor is yours. <laughs> yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, thank you. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am the Vida Komolovaite, a master's student at KTU. And today I am presenting our research on a topic, uh, vehicle make detection using the transfer learning approach. So our research is mainly motivated by the desire to use urban cameras, since the number of city cameras increases year after year, a solution was required to monitor vehicles in order to locate the criminal suspects and to reduce officers' intense eye work in monitoring the screens. So to date, the majority of vehicle classification work has been done using a logo-based technique from front images, and the results are actually excellent despite the number of used classes. However, while this, this type of study is appropriate for, uh, let's say, parking lot cameras, uh, urban cameras capture vehicles from many different uh, various angles. Uh, and uh, these type of, of tasks uh, have maximum 80% accuracy and only 62% with real uh, surveillance cameras. So therefore, the aim of this research was to create a retrainable vehicle detection and classification framework that can accurately classify vehicles uh, images from various viewpoints to simulate the effect of uh, city cameras. So our proposed system consists of uh, the preparation stage, which includes data collection from Lithuanian car marketplace, uh, then data filtering using YOLA detector, um, then manual validation through created um, interface, then image pre-processing, data augmentation, and finally training the classifier by fine-tuning already pre-trained models. And uh, the usage stage, uh, meanwhile, involves uh, model adaptation for external applications containing traffic camera data, uh, where each video frame, um, for each video frame, the car is located using YOLA model, you only look once, uh, then the cropped area is pre-processed and the prepared car make classification model is used. Uh, so here is the classification architecture. Uh, the classifier reuses the pre-trained feature vectors of the most efficient uh, architectures. So it is efficient net and uh, mobile net, uh, and they were pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset. So uh, then we select the best performing uh, model by combining um, different uh, uh, different uh, 
fully connected layer combinations from version one to version eight and testing the impact of regularization, uh, batch normalization, dropout, and many other factors. And uh, so skipping multiple data preparation steps, such as data collection, creating auto labeler, um, using the YOLO model on the COCA data set to filter out only the valid uh, car images, and then creating a manual validation interface. Uh, finally, we have a data set uh, composed of 19 different car brands uh, with photos from various angles. And uh, the training set, uh, as you can see from the image, had around 600 images representing each car brand. So uh, by performing classification using two pre-trained networks, mobile net and efficient net, as I mentioned earlier, and eight different classifiers, uh, the efficient net feature vector uh, with um, seventh classifier had the best accuracy, accuracy results of 81.39%. And this accuracy actually exceeds previous research uh, with maximum accuracy of 80% when analyzing car photos from various angles. And in terms of model training time, uh, the seventh version took 15 minutes and 22 seconds uh, to reach this level of accuracy. And this is uh, an adequate time to retrain and upgrade model with a large number of car brands. So since it is very hard to interpret a uh, deep learning model, we used uh, gradient weighted class activation mapping, uh, in short GRADCAM, which identifies the key areas. It is denoted in red um, and uh, they are creating, we are created from the last convolutional layer. So um, if we take a look at the images on the left, uh, in images where the car is visible from the front or the back, the model focuses only on the brand symbol. And uh, if you take a look at the images on the right, then viewed from the side or at 45 degree angle, the model makes uh, a brand prediction based on windows, lamps, or actually contours of the car. So to verify the reliability of the model, we used three different scenarios. Um, the unseen data at first using vehicle images from the side only, which resulted in 76.19% uh, accuracy. Then using uh, a popular Stanford car data set, which yielded 66.86% accuracy. And finally using 12 images from recorded video as shown in the image, uh, which resulted in 75% accuracy. So basically this shows that the average performance for different data distributions is 8.7% worse compared to the initial test data set, um, indicating that there is a small general generalization gap. So as a result, the investigation's final uh, findings are as follows. Uh, first, when classifying Lithuanian local vehicles, regardless of the viewing angle, Efficient net is uh, more than 7% accurate than mobile net. And the proposed efficient net architecture adjustment uh, improves the performance of the original classifier by 9% and achieves an acceptable classification score of 81.54%. Uh, and meanwhile, the generalization test revealed that the classification gap is not significant, resulting in results that are 8.7% worse. And the GRADCAM method has shown that the class four distinguishes the car brand based on the location of the logo. And if it is not found, then the body, hood, or windows become the essential predictor. So the findings imply that the trained model can be used for urban vehicle monitoring. And this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Uh... Well, very, very short, uh, but uh, interesting presentation. So uh, probably there will be some questions from the audience. I hope so. So maybe I would start the discussion because I am focusing in my research on uh, computer vision and uh, image anal analysis. So uh, it is a very interesting paper for, for me personally. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would ask first about the train test ratio, how 
many images or video frames that were used for training, 80% or 70%? Yes, uh, it was used 80-20% uh, split. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and the second question is, um, how do you think, because um, it's very good that uh, you uh, created the database uh, or data set which has the, had uh, a very broad number of brands and a similar number of images for each brand. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it seems that uh, the front and rear images are much more important than back or the side images or 45 degrees images. Uh, have you considered uh, a kind of two-stage network maybe? Um, Yes. Only for, for, for some doubtful uh, uh, images, uh, side views, maybe, yes, or not. Yes, this was actually one of proposal for future research. Uh, at first, to cl classify uh, which side of image uh, of curve is seen, um, and then used accordingly uh, appropriate model for that particular site. OK. So everything is clear. So maybe another very short question. Maybe uh, some image pre-processing, uh, such as background elimination, maybe would yes. help, especially for Stanford cards data set or something. Have you used this approach or not yet? Yes, I, I didn't, but actually it seems that you read my paper because this was also one of my proposals um, <laughs> to eliminate yeah. the background. Yeah. And to, one more proposal was um, um, instead of just eliminating background, create artificial backgrounds with, um, okay. let's say, different weather conditions or different road um, images. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I will read your paper. I haven't read <laughs> it yet, but uh, it was just the first idea to, to, to think from my experiences. Yeah. Good okay. ideas. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Okay, if not, thank you once again, and we will switch to our uh, fourth presentation again from Turkey. Uh, Yelisa Kinci will present the paper uh, with uh, the longest title in this session, Analysis of Public Agenda Using COVID-19 Pandemics, based on Turkish and English tweets using non-negative matrix factorization and hypothesis testing. Please present your paper and share your Hello. Screen. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Also, thank you for pronouncing my name right. <laughs> uh, <No> <laughs> especially, uh, they do not pronounce my surname, uh, last name, right? So uh, it was surprising for me. So I wanted to <laughs> say this. Okay, let me share my screen. My computer is a bit is a bit slow, so sorry for that. Okay. Ah, we can see it. Okay, just a minute. Now it's okay, I think. Uh, okay, I'm uh, Yeliza Kinji. I'm working as an associate professor at Istanbul Big University. My co-authors are uh, Mustafa Yavash and Aysun Duran. Uh, I'm presenting today, so let's begin. Uh, so I will not uh, read again the title. So we analyzed the public agenda during COVID-19 pandemics. Uh, but here our idea was to compare the Turkish and English tweets. Why? Because we thought that the Turkish tweets will show the public ag agenda of Turkish people, Turkey and English tweets for the 
uh, rest of the world. So we wanted to compare the agent, uh, the agenda of the world and uh, our country in terms of uh, COVID-19 uh, related tweets. So uh, these uh, tweets were collected for uh, January 2021. Uh, so it has been more than one year. Uh, but uh, as you know, uh, doing the analysis and writing, it takes time. So we labeled the tweets using Vader sentiment uh, library. And also uh, we tried to do some hypothesis testing in order to see the difference between the world and Turkey. And also if there is a difference uh, in times. Uh, I will go uh, to the detail of the of these the hypothesis tests, we also did top topic modeling using non-negative matrix factorization for uh, Turkish tweets and English tweets. And let's begin. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, the literature uh, doesn't include studies that compare the agenda of different languages and countries in terms of COVID-19 uh, pandemics. In fact, uh, this is an interesting issue uh, because not only for uh, pandemics, but uh, in terms of other topics, there are very few studies, few studies which compare two different uh, regions, uh, public agenda, in fact. In fact. Uh, so we thought that uh, this has been a contribution to the literature. Uh, also, we, uh, there are no studies uh, which statistically test the relationship between the sentiment values of the tweets and uh, uh, languages and time periods. That's why we think that uh, we have filled uh, some gap in the literature. So to summarize, uh, our aims can be uh, summarized in three uh, fold. The first one to explore the attitudes of people by sentiment analysis, to analyze the relationships between sentiment values and time language using hypothesis testing, to understand and compare the public opinion of Turkey and world about COVID-19 pandemics. So uh, with this framework, I can uh, explain our methodology. First, we collect Turkish and English tweets containing some specific hashtags. Then we uh, do some pre-processing and then we do the sentiment analysis, which label the tweets as positive, negative, and neutral using Vader. And then we do the uh, hypothesis testing to understand the relationship between the sentiment label and the language and the sentiment label and the time period. For this time period, we divided uh, that month into two, the first 15 days and uh, the next 15 days, because the first month of 2021 was important for the world and our country. Why? Because the vaccinations uh, uh, began uh, in the first month of 2000, uh, 2021, uh, beginning from December of 2020, vaccinations started in all over the world. That's why we divided the January into uh, two periods, the first 15 days and the second 15 days. Uh, so by doing this hypothesis testing, we could understand if there is a difference, significant difference uh, in terms of the sentiment values of tweets in the first half and second half of January 2021. And then we did uh, topic modeling. Uh, in the topic modeling, uh, we did them for Turkish tweets and English tweets. Uh, we found the optimal number of uh, topics. And then uh, we grouped the, the uh, topics into teams for Turkish and English. And we compared and have seen if uh, they are similar, if the public agenda of Turkey and world are similar or not. So let's begin with the data preparation. We use Python, uh, Shape Python programming, 3P API. And we collected 
27,000 uh, tweets for Turkish and 100,000 tweets for English. English had to be more because uh, English, we assumed that English tweets will uh, uh, reflect the opinion of the world uh, and the Turkey uh, reflect the opinion of Turkey. So uh, English tweets are uh, four times, uh, nearly four, approximately four times of uh, Turkish tweets. Here are the hashtags that we use. And uh, just looking at the percentages of the positive, negative, and neutral tweets of Turkish and uh, English data sets, uh, we can uh, get some quick ideas. So what are they? Let's look at the first figure, uh, so figure two in our paper, but here's the first figure. So uh, in the first one, you can see the uh, percentages for positive, negative, and neutral tweets for Turkish tweets and English tweets. And uh, here, uh, as you can say, uh, the blue ones are Turkish and, uh, pardon, uh, the blue, the first one shows January 1 to 15, and uh, the uh, orange one shows uh, the period between January 16 and 31. So as you see, in the second half of January, the uh, number of uh, the percentage of the positive tweets increased. So here you can see. And similarly, the uh, percentage of the neutral tweets increased in the se uh, second half of uh, January uh, when we talk about Turkish data sets. So, uh, here, a uh, fast understanding, a quick understanding from the first figure is that in the second half of January, uh, the percentage of the positive uh, opinion has uh, come into the scene. So when we look at the English tweets, as you see, again, in the second half, the uh, percentage of the English tweets increased and uh, negative decreased and for the neutral it was the same so again uh, in the second half in the world uh, the uh, positive uh, opinion uh, has come into this uh, came into the scene but uh, let's look at the percentages of the figure two and figure three so that we can compare them when we look at that, we can see that the uh, positive person, uh, the percentage of the positive tweets is more in English data sets. So we can say that, in fact, the uh, world is more positive uh, in terms of COVID-19 in uh, January 2021. But in order, to do, in order to understand this uh, statistically, we will do a hypothesis testing. But just looking at the percentages, we can get a quick idea like this. But in order to get a scientific uh, conclusion from these findings, uh, we will do hypothesis testing in the next slides. So here uh, we did it. Our first hypothesis is there's a relationship between the sentiment values, positive, negative, neutral of the tweets, and the language, Turkish and English. And here you can see the details about the cross-tabulation matrix, uh, but we can not, but we can see the result here. Uh, the analysis show that uh, the uh, language is significantly related to the sentiment class. So our idea here, uh, our first idea that we uh, derived from these figures uh, was um, proved by the hypothesis analysis. So we can say that there is a difference between the Turkish and English uh, idea sentiment uh, values, let's say. Uh, in uh, January of 2021. So uh, Turkish people are more negative and uh, English, uh, the rest of the world is uh, more positive in fact, because the percentages are higher 
in the English data set. And that is a uh, significant uh, when we test it uh, with uh, chi-square analysis. But uh, here we can see that the hypothesis is rejected. Uh, which hypothesis? There is a relationship between the sentiment values of the tweaks and the time period, first half and second half. So here we tested if there is a difference between the first half of January and second half of the January. So here, uh, this is independent from the Turkish uh, and English languages. Here, just the time period and the sentiment values are tested. And here we can see that uh, the, the time periods is also significantly related to the sentiment class. And uh, here, okay. Here, uh, our quick idea is uh, also proved by hypothesis test at a 5% significance level. And we can say that in the second half of January 2021, people became more positive in terms of uh, COVID-19. So this was the first uh, part of the analysis. The second part of the analysis is based on the topic modeling. So we did a topic modeling using the Turkish and English uh, tweets. And here we can see that uh, the number, uh, here we can see the frequency of the Turkish uh, keywords and English keywords. As you can see, COVID is the uh, first one in each uh, columns. And then the second one is vaccine, assume is vaccine in English. So the first two are the same for Turkey and for the rest of the world. The first one, the most frequent word in the tweets are COVID and the second one is vaccine. And then the third, fourth, etc. it changes. And also uh, we did topic modeling, as I said, and here we calculated the coherence scores in order to understand the optimal uh, number of the uh, topics. So uh, here, uh, as you can see, 15 has been seen as the optimal number of topics. So there has been 15 topics in the uh, Turkish uh, topic groupings and uh, Turkish topics and English topics. Both of them are 15 and uh, in order to uh, understand the public agenda better, we grouped them into teams. So uh, similar topics were grouped uh, in uh, the same team. So uh, there has been six teams in the Turkish uh, data sets. The first one is about COVID cases and deaths in Turkey and in the world. And second team is about vaccines, which includes three topics. The first one included four topics. The third one includes two topics. And they are about, pardon, declarations from the Turkish health ministry and prevention methods because the Turkish health ministry uh, made many, ex made explanations every day and uh, had some warnings about the pre uh, prevention methods. Uh, the first one is about local news. Uh, it is normal to have some local news in any time, uh, either there is a pandemic or not. So uh, sixth one is general news. The first one, local news, is about, uh, uh, about some uh, regions of Turkey. And uh, the general news, uh, news is about the general uh, uh, agenda, general agenda, general news of Turkey. And the last team has includes just one topic and it's about the prevention methods uh, from COVID-19. Let's look at the English data set. In fact, as you can see, they are very similar. Uh, so here we have COVID cases and deaths in the first team for the world agenda. And again, the second one is about vaccines, very similar to the Turkish agenda. And again, like Turkey, in the world agenda, there are some news and declarations from the president, but since the tweets are in English, 
this is uh, these are the declarations uh, from the president of us uh, there were some relief plans etc there were some economic uh, issues in uh, usa that's why uh, you can see some uh, keywords like trump biden etc and also team four is about new variants this new variants and it has two topics and as you can see in the turkish teams there were there wasn't a team like this uh, the new variants was a team in the english data sets again general news similar uh, and prevention topics so here new variants are uh, new variants team is different from the turkish data set as you can see and to conclude uh, we can say that uh, the language is significantly related to the sentiment plus turkish people were more negative and the uh, rest of the world let's say uh, they were more positive and but the english speaking people here because the tweets were in english and uh, the other finding is time period was also significantly was also significantly related with the sentiment plus in the second half of january 2021 people were more positive because the number of vac vaccinations increased in the world and when we look at the topics or uh, teams in the turkish data set and english uh, data set uh, they are very similar uh, just in the uh, one difference was uh, significant uh, here as i told you there were new variants as a team in the english data set so that is all for my uh, presentation. I can take your questions if you like. You are very welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would encourage you to ask the questions for our presenter. Yes. I'm looking at the chat. There are no questions. Nobody raises hand so maybe oh. i would ask uh, uh, but the, well, i gave all the details that's why there are no questions yeah, okay but uh, <laughs> one short question maybe uh -huh. uh, well i thought about the automatic analysis of, of text of tweets and uh, you mentioned some tags uh, in the table uh, we can see it now uh, but i wonder if there are some I would say keywords or key phrases which uh, you have found to be typical, uh, typical for uh, positive or negative or, or neutral tweets uh, just to, to simplify the classification or, mm. or, or not yet, maybe. maybe. Yes. In fact, that's a good idea, yes. Uh, maybe we could do another analysis to understand the frequency of the, third, of the keywords in the negative tweets and positive tweets so but uh, yes we have that data we can do that analysis but right now i do not have ready okay so uh, probably you but that's a good idea to understand the keywords in the positive ones and negative ones yes yes maybe maybe there will be some uh, very strongly negative words yes. which could be uh, used as the basis of of yes, that's identification idea, of, of the background of tweets. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it was just my curiosity if it was used or not. Okay, so thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, if not, maybe mm -hmm. I'm the most active person. Let me uh, considering the questions. Okay, so thank you Let once again. Stop. Okay. Okay. Thank you once again. And uh, our last presentation should uh, should be uh, launched in a minute. Uh, again, uh, it's the uh, session of female presenters <laughs> mainly. So again, Sigden Baki and I would ask her about the presentation 
of the paper entitled New Hybrid Intrusion Detection and Prevention System to Ensure Security and Privacy in Big Data. So, okay, Sigvem, we can see her. So you can start. This Pardon. This paper uh, titled "New Hybrid uh, Intrusion Detection and Prevention System to Ensure Security and Privacy in Big Data." Uh, big Data has emerged as a concept. Uh, is the form of, of all the data collection from different sources, such as blogs, photo, video, videos, log files. Uh, therefore, big data is an important topic in many fights. However, it is not only very difficult to store big data and analyze, but also brings uh, serious threat to security of sensitive, uh, sensitive information. And uh, <laughs> Aim to uh, our study mm. this paper description to uh, the uh, issues surrounding big data security and uh, privacy and provides the solution with hybrid models. Uh, our proposed model can uh, perform the best uh, prediction accuracy and performance cre creation. This study is based on intrusion detection and privacy system built uh, on big data and classification. The method used to analyze and uh, evaluation success success complete. Uh, the the kind of contribution of our of our study is that analyze uh, all types of attacks <coughs> in different forms that can uh, occur on real data in large scale uh, uh, enterprise using big data was uh, provided in addition uh, to prevent the, uh, this uh, attention secret uh, break may uh, occur in the uh, future world also prevent this uh, the model provides on the real data obtained uh, turkey uh, uh, Turkey production company uh, was compared with classification method and uh, obtained uh, result were presentation uh, presented. Only uh, other states it uh, both protect uh, data by prevent uh, data leak uh, and loss uh, of data and provides fast result in terms of performance. The aim of uh, our study is to take uh, a step towards uh, solving uh, solution the security chance uh, that might arise in the future by addressing the security problems that uh, arise with big data. Thus, it helps to eliminate the uh, uh, definition in this area by uh, shedding light on the studies to be done in the, this area. Big data uh, five uh, value volume uh, variety uh, relation uh, varied big data uh, and uh, secreting uh, big data these secreting element in big data uh, confidential integrating available uh, big uh, confidential before to prevent in the transfer of Value <coughs> data of company and strategy or uh, innovation to uh, of on on region on authorized performance and uh, ensuring that only authorized user <coughs> can process the data. Data integrity aims uh, not only to prevent uh, an authorized uh, user from modified data uh, available uh, on available uh, on the other hand is the fetch that the data can be accessed and used at any time by uh, attribution users uh, big data security states uh, data collection data management programming and system uh, data analysis data collection 
data cleaning, uh, data conversion, and technology normalization uh, at this state, uh, and creation, authorization, access control, uh, such as access control, data management, uh, data storage, uh, distribute data uh, base, distribute file, uh, data hiding, uh, and uh, the state includes security and confidentiality issue that occur when storing data collection during the uh, data collection process. Programming and uh, system recursive programming, graph uh, programming, memory programming, and uh, calculation of data flow. Data analysis, uh, query, uh, semantic analysis, <coughs> human computer, <coughs> pardon, excuse me. <laughs> data visualization and uh, and uh, data uh, and uh, our study flow chart and uh, first data collection pro processing normalization training data uh, clustering data test data uh, and SVM uh, genetic algorithm uh, different SPM kernel function uh, and uh, normal data detection and uh, attack types detection uh, and uh, prevention. Uh, hybrid model, uh, our study uh, three hybrid model and uh, first hybrid model uh, classification and class training. Uh, Second hybrid model, clustering and uh, classification. Uh, multiple hybrid model, uh, classification plus classification and uh, clustering. Uh, the successful <coughs> <coughs> successful result using uh, the RBF kernel uh, SVM. Uh, genetic algorithm, Kamins, and uh, classification and uh, classing uh, first hybrid model uh, and genetic algorithm and Kamins, uh, equation, uh, uh, it is calculated by uh, averagely corrected and normal uh, behaviors found her and, and types of attack that can be prevented with the model we propose uh, in both hybrid models. We uh, recommend it provides data production uh, by better detection attack types compared to the single classification or uh, single clustering method. It gave more successful results. The hybrid model made uh, with the genetic algorithm uh, uh, gave more successful result than the uh, than SVM uh, method. The successful second uh, hybrid model uh, clustering and classification uh, are SVM RBF kernel uh, for SVM and uh, other. Uh, our model successful. Uh, <coughs> and uh, is, it is calculated by uh, average, uh, by average, uh, the corrected and normal uh, behavior found here and the types of attack uh, that can be prevented with the model we propose. In both hybrid model, uh, we recommend it. It provides uh, data production uh, by better detection attack uh, types uh, compared to single uh, classification or single classing method. It gave a uh, more successful result. Uh, the hybrid model made uh, with uh, the genetic algorithm uh, gain more successful result than the SVM uh, model. Uh, conclusion, uh, conclusion. <coughs> uh, 
conclusion uh, it is uh, uh, this uh, study uh, conclusion <coughs> Pardon. With the development of technology, uh, data access and data communication uh, has become quite uh, easy. Uh, this two uh, distribution system, big data, uh, quick and easy access to data from uh, anywhere can be answered. And uh, in this, uh, because in this study, it is aimed to implement uh, the data security problem <coughs> in big data escalation, the security and privacy policy, policy with uh, to propose a hybrid model. A model has been developed to uh, both detect and prevent different types of uh, attack and normal uh, behavior that case data leak, uh, the does data confidentiality, uh, data integrity, and data consistent are ensured in data transmission. Access control and uh, exploration process are done uh, through the hybrid model. Unlike uh, provide studies, data security is provided for all operation on big data. Uh, the difficult that arise uh, during the implementation uh, of security police uh, success uh, alteration, uh, data uh, acquisition and uh, alteration in big data <coughs> overcome. <coughs> My presentation is ended. Uh, thank you for listening. Any question? <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Wishing you a good health. <coughs> uh, pardon, uh, you, pardon. you have some problems. Maybe it's good that uh, such presentations can be made remotely in such case. Uh, maybe there are some questions from the audience. Uh, I can look at the chat. Excuse me, I have a headache and uh, I think I eat. Yeah, so uh, maybe I, I would just have a question to the <coughs> slide just to make sure uh, you have presented the combination of SVM, genetic algorithm and um, k-means and reversely genetic algorithm uh, SVM and k-means leading to better results. Uh, yes. Are there just different orders of, uh, of launching such methods or not? Uh, I, uh, 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 we will use uh, different algorithm method uh, and uh, in the future inspection in big data uh, Another uh, work uh, will be published as uh, other conference, uh, different mm -hmm. other uh, conference. But the, the difference in results uh, uh, because of the use of the other genetic algorithms or just the, the, the use of different order first as we have uh, oh, okay. the genetic uh, algorithm or not? Yes, uh, genetic algorithm uh, more than uh, better uh, different uh, other method uh, and uh, we uh, other conference will be published as uh, another work. Uh, moreover, on the starting uh, state, uh, this paper. Uh, starting state. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions <coughs> uh, from the participants? If not, there is nothing left to do, then thank you once again and conclude the session. So, I am very happy that uh, all of you uh, have presented successfully your uh, achievements, your papers, and uh, uh, 
there were some questions mainly from myself, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I think that this is a good success of all of you that you met the time requirements and presented without any technical issues or your presentations. So thank you once again, and thanks Darius, uh, Professor Darius Andrikaitis to making it possible to organize this session and uh, thanks for the invitation for myself to chair this se session. It was a great pleasure for me. All the thank best you for all the presenters. Thanks.